Hi there, I'm Marcus Hutzel, and today we're talking audio knowledge. Now, in professional audio, we're often talking about dBs or decibels, but I find there's a lot of audio people out there that don't always know exactly what that means, especially when it comes to zero dBU, or some say unity gain or nominal gain. I hear these terms thrown around a lot, and there are a lot of audio folks out there who really don't know what they actually mean. They just know, hey, you know, that's where my fader needs to be. But 0 dB and your fader position aren't exactly relatable in that way. So unless you understand what those markings are next to your fader, and more importantly, on your audio meters, then you're just running blind trying to operate an audio console. And if you don't understand gain structure and dB levels, then at the least you could get yourself into an audio situation that you don't know how to correct, and at worst you could damage your or someone else's hearing. So let's break this down really quickly. And remember, we're talking standard audio equipment that is labeled and referenced using DBU. Like any analog or digital audio mixing console, like the Heath Z series, or even a Yamaha QL5, Behringer X32, or the hundreds of other makes and models of mixing consoles. But this also applies to anything that is labeled in DBU. Because once your signal gets into a computer and into software like GarageBand, Logic, Pro Tools, a zero reading is a different thing. You've often heard that you should never hit zero dB, but that's in reference to audio inside a computer, because those meters are using a different scale. They're using dBFS, or dB full scale, and that's not the same thing as dBU. When your meters are referencing dBFS, you're right, you would never want to hit zero, because that means your signal is too loud for the circuitry. But we're talking about dBU, and therefore talking about audio signals that take place outside of any traditional desktop or laptop computer. And when we're in the DBU world, we can go over that zero mark, and oftentimes we'll need to depending on the situation. So when your audio equipment's reference or scale is listed in DBU, you can go over zero. The circuitry is built to handle that. It's just called headroom, and that's why we have DB readings above the zero mark. And most standalone digital audio consoles, despite them being digital, also use the DBU scale, just like analog consoles, even though they're converting everything to digital. So typically when people say unity gain or nominal gain, they're most often referring to that zero dB mark on their fader or audio device. And that's kind of it, but it's definitely not the whole story, and has almost nothing to do with your fader at all. So what does that zero refer to? Here's the answer. Grab a pen and paper. I'll wait. Okay, you ready? Zero dB or more specifically 0 dBU in the audio world, is a reference to a specific amount of AC voltage flowing through your audio system. 0 dBU, or many people just simply say 0 dB, means that there is an audio signal sending 0.775 volts of electricity through a system or cable. Let me say that again. When an audio signal is gained up and showing 0 dBU on the meters, it means that there are 0.775 volts of electricity flowing down that cable or path. That's it. Standard, alternating current electricity. 0.775 volts to be exact. So why is it zero then? Why choose zero to signify an amount of voltage that is more than zero? Well, it dates back to phone companies needing to measure how much signal loss they had when transmitting audio over long distances. If the signal at the receiving end was the same strength or voltage as the signal at the initiation point, then it was said to have zero loss in level from point A to point B. Zero loss or zero dB loss or just zero dB. Therefore, any loss in level or voltage would be some amount of dB down from where it started. So any loss would be stated as a negative dB value, aka we had three dB loss in voltage. So that's how and why we see negative numbers on the dBU scale. A negative dBU reading, like negative 10 dBU, still means there's voltage present, but it's just less than 0.775 volts. Okay, but why 0.775 volts? Well, because at the time, the telephone equipment and lines had 600 ohms of impedance on them, and the telephone companies needed to push one milliwatt of power down the line, and it took exactly 0.775 volts of electricity to push that one milliwatt of power down a line that had 600 ohms impedance. And it's important to note that in the space of telephone systems, dB had a specific reference letter after the letters D and B, and that was referred to as dBm. So dBm implies a reference impedance of 600 ohms within the wiring of the system. Audio engineers adopted the zero or 0.775 volts level of dBm, but didn't need a reference to impedance of the lines or equipment. 
so they dropped that reference to impedance and just called their measurement dBU or dB unreferenced. So with dBU, we don't take the impedance of the lines into account, just the voltage level. And it's this roughly 0.775 volts of electricity, or zero dBU, that audio consoles were designed around and really need to be able to do something significant to your signal. It's the nominal amount of voltage they need to be able to use their circuitry to affect the audio signal. Not having enough gain to get up to near zero dBU is like having a five gallon bucket that has a bit of mud in the bottom and only has one gallon of water in it. The water in this case being your audio signal and the mud being like noise. You can still get to the water, but it's way down there near all that mud or noise and you have to reach much further down into the bucket to get your signal and you may pull up some sludge or noise with it that you don't want. This is kind of like having to turn your EQ knobs all the way up or down just to have a minor effect on your signal because there's too little voltage and it's sitting way down there. So on an audio console, if you're not gaining up your inputs to get their voltage up to near zero dBU, you'll have to turn your EQ or other knobs much further up or down to have them affect your signal. And in doing so, you'll then be grabbing a lot of that mud or system noise with your adjustments. Get it? That's why we have gain knobs for every input to get the inputs up to a level for our console's electronics. And since your channel fader comes after the gain knob and any other channel strip effects like EQ, your fader can only pass the amount of voltage it's been given when the fader is at zero. So if I only gain my input up to show negative eight dBU, for example, on the input meters, and I put my fader at zero dBU, only negative eight dBU of voltage will pass through that fader. Because when your fader is at zero, it means it neither boosts nor cuts the incoming signal. It's just passing along the same voltage it's receiving. And this is also why audio consoles and other audio equipment give us visual indicators like LED meters to measure and adjust the incoming gain. Because again, audio equipment needs enough gain to be able to operate its internal components the most efficiently. I'll say that again as well. Your audio equipment, like your mixer, needs enough gain or voltage running through its components to be able to operate efficiently, and it needs enough gain or voltage to be able to keep as much noise out of your signal as possible. Again, much like scooping up water from a dirty five gallon bucket or a muddy riverbed, if the water or signal is too low, you're more likely to pick up sludge or noise with your water. Whereas if your water or signal is stronger, you'll be a lot less likely to pick up or pass along any mud or noise through the system. And this is why you have a gain knob on all of those microphone inputs, because microphones send out a lot less voltage than zero dBU. They usually send out somewhere around negative 20 to negative 60 dBU, which equates to much smaller amounts of voltage. So the gain knob on your mixing console is there to gain up those low level, low voltage microphone signals up to a level that the rest of the components in your audio console can then use to do things to, like EQ that signal, compress that signal, and send that signal to other buses on your console, and then out of your console to amplifiers and speakers. So zero dBU equals 0.775 volts of electricity, and most pro audio devices want to operate with that voltage level as well. And if we have all of our components gained up to zero, that puts our audio system in unison with all components, or having your system at unity. Now, you'll also see dBV here and there, which isn't used as much in modern audio equipment. Zero dBV also references a specific amount of voltage, but it's a slightly different voltage when you're at zero dBV. Zero dBV measures one volt instead of 0.775 volts. So they're close, but not exactly the same. So dBU and dBV measure things a little bit differently. It's like they have two different starting points when they're at their respective zero. Zero dBU equals 0.775 volts of electricity, and zero dBV equals one volt of electricity. Again, they're close, but not the same. But remember that we're almost always talking about dBU in the audio world these days. Also, dB or decibels when we're talking about audio gain and voltage has nothing to do with the audible decibels that hit our ears through the air. That's a bit different. A decibel or decibel is just a term that is used for measuring differences in power levels. It's a logarithmic comparison between two values. So we can use decibel to describe differences in voltage like dBU or dBV, and we can use decibel to describe or compare loudness levels to our ears, which is dBSPL 
or sound pressure level. More on that another time. But the word decibel is just a term to compare values. And when we're talking about decibels for audio, it's the letter or letter that come after that dB that tell us what we're referencing, like dBU, dBV, dBFS, and dBSPL. So keep that in mind when looking at your dB scales. So in short, when we're talking about zero dB, we're most often referring to zero dBU, which equals 0.775 volts of electricity when signal is flowing. That's why we have gain knobs in our consoles to get all of the incoming signals up to zero dBU and therefore give the audio console enough voltage to be able to operate most efficiently. And just because your fader is at zero dB, that does not mean that you've properly gained up the incoming signal to zero dBU. And therefore putting your fader at zero does not mean you're passing that 0.775 volts of electricity through the fader if you haven't properly gained up your input to zero dBU. Faders are not for input gain. They have no effect on the incoming signal to the console. Because your gain knob is the first step in your audio signal path, it comes before your fader and gaining up the incoming signal to zero dBU then gives your fader enough voltage to send through the rest of the console. It's our job as an audio technician to utilize and understand proper gain structure so that our system has enough voltage running through it to operate efficiently. And that preferred amount of voltage for most audio systems is zero dBU or 0.775 volts of electricity. Did you write that down? All right, I think that's it for what is zero dBU. Live it, learn it, love it, write it down, and use your gain knob properly. Good luck. Have fun.